counseling techniques, making hypotheses transparent, with Sandra Collins and Gina Ko. Counselors will develop hypotheses about client challenges that are important to check out with the client. This ensures that they are developing shared understanding and avoiding assumptions. In this video, we demonstrate how to offer up hypotheses for consideration by the client. While continuing collaborative meaning making to refine those hypotheses through client feedback. Gina, welcome back. Hi, Sandra. I have something I've been thinking about since we met last time. Providing transparency. And I'm wondering if it's okay for us to start by me sharing what I'm thinking about. Checking perceptions. Sounds great. I always want to hear what you're thinking about. <laughs> okay, so I've been thinking about the idea of good enough and um, balance in your life. And part of what I heard you say last week was that you want, there's things that you want to increase in your life, like self-care and time with family and time with friends. And there's also things you want to decrease in your life like the availability to clients and maybe some of the evening work. Summarizing. But as we went through that conversation, I started to get a sense that um, without actually taking things out and just moving things around, I'm wondering whether that balance is something that will be an end result. So that's kind of a hypothesis that I've been playing around with this week. And I just thought I'd toss it out there and see how that sits with you or doesn't sit with you. Self-disclosing. Mm -hmm. Very good question, um, Sandra, and wonderings. I mean, um, yes, I'm still playing with moving my schedule around. How many evenings do I have a bit more free with my family? And for example, last couple of, last week, my son was in on a trip to Quebec, Montreal, Ottawa. So it's just my daughter and I and, and my spouse came back from his trip from the US. So um, yeah, I had a couple of evenings more free. Uh, I just came home earlier than I usually do. And it was nice because I was able to make dinner. We were able to enjoy time as a family. So I really do think that if I move with my schedule around, even a bit more so intentionally, it would help with that balance. Okay. I realized I really enjoy cooking too. I missed that. <laughs> yeah, that's something you mentioned the last time too. Reflecting meaning. Mm -hmm. And the more that I'm doing it, more so, the more I realize I really love being present with the ingredients, you know, cutting things up, making soup or stir fry. I miss those moments. So, hmm. Okay, that makes sense. And so, when you look at the whole picture, my sense it, from what you're saying is that maybe there's not actually too much in the whole picture. It's mm -hmm. just that um, it's just about rearranging the pieces in a way that's going to work for you. Summarizing. Would you say uh, that's more accurate? Checking perceptions. Uh, yes, I, I would say so. I mean, last week, um, I think... I communicated with you, uh, Sandra, I said I had about 30 clients, right? Mm -hmm. So with that and recording my podcast and candidacy exam I was a part of, mm -hmm. um, it felt okay. It felt okay because I was able, again, to have that evening time, a couple of evenings with my family. So yeah, I think it's still, mm -hmm, it works. It will work, I think. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and it's interesting um, that both last week and this week, you're talking about um, the joy that you got from the extra time with your family, right? So something is already shifting as you um, begin to think about this balance. Reflecting meaning. Yes, yes, it, it definitely has been begun shifting. Hmm. The other thing I was wondering about is how the how the idea of being good enough supports that reorganizing and finding balance, like being good enough in each of these areas. Probing. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I don't know why I'm compelled to go back to the topic of cooking, right? I mean, cooking takes time, it takes thought, it takes shopping and planning. And if I'm not able to do it, uh, that's okay. My spouse, he can help. He all oh, he's so good at that. Uh, but when I can, I was volunteers. Oh, my, I'm gonna cook this evening. I'm gonna make lunch. I'm gonna make right now on the weekends breakfast. So, I think, yeah, not being too hard on myself. If some weeks I'm not able to do the the cooking as I envision, right? And then the way it tastes. I mean, maybe it's not perfect, but good enough. Sometimes you know they want, might want to add a bit more salt, or or they may give my, me feedback about my cooking. So I think to be going back to being kind to myself, right? And mm -hmm. lots of trial and errors, and and I, yeah, I want to grow in those areas of um, the criticism and how come sometimes I don't feel good enough, and to to use self compassion. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting, it's an interesting choice, the cooking, because it's a really good example of moving into an area where um, you haven't spent a lot of time in recent years, maybe. Um, and so it's a really interesting test of the good enough. Reflecting meaning. Um, and I love what you said about, I'm just going to lean into that and do my best and be open to feedback. And I don't have to be the perfectionist that you talked about in other sessions. Offering affirmations. Mm -hmm. I just want to share one more thing, Sandra. Uh, my son came back from his trip yesterday and I made uh, something called pho. Pho is like a Vietnamese soup, uh, beef noodle soup. And he really enjoyed it. He said, thanks, mommy, right? Because he didn't have a lot of Asian food on his trip. So that, that was rewarding in itself that he was slurping it up and yeah, and it didn't take me too long either. And I know how to make that. So mm -hmm. what other examples might there have been in the last week that might um, help reinforce that idea that um, balance can come from being good enough and shifting the priorities and where you spend your time? Questioning. Well, I was able to actually fit in three rounds of golf last week, which surprisingly, um, there was one day where it was a last minute, uh, two clients really moved their their session to another date. And I thought, okay, that's my time to fit in that golf in the early morning. And then the weekends, I was able to book two more rounds. So that was incredible. I was able to... Think of okay what do i need do i need to do more work or do i need to just put the work aside and be with nature be with my friends and my and my spouse and and go out and think mm, lovely mm -hmm. i have one other thing i was thinking about and that's um and I'm, and I need to be careful here because I also have the tendency to be a perfectionist. And we talked about being a perfectionist earlier. And so one of the things I wondered about was um, when I slip into that perfectionist mentality, it kind of steals my joy and I put energy and probably time into the perfectionist part of me. Self-disclosing. And I just wondered for you, um, when when you slip over into that, whether that also kind of steals from the balance, um, maybe not even so much in terms of time, but in terms of energy. Probing. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very interesting. I've been reading more about perfectionism and there's concepts such as positive versus negative, right? So for me, what if the perfectionism and see I, perfectionism isn't something that I would say I grew up with or is really, really ingrained in me but there are moments where of course if it's public communications and these videos for example has to be pretty good right so when I notice oh actually this perfectionistic thinking is helping me you know strive and to improve and be better that that's helpful but when it it's more like bringing me down, I can't do it. If it ever becomes debilitating, then I know that it's not gonna, it's not helpful. Mm. Yeah, that's really helpful actually, because it's sort of um, teasing apart what the perfectionist um, energy can be. And sometimes it may be motivating and helpful and other times it may undermine that 
I'm okay as I am in this moment, good enough energy. Reflecting meaning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thanks for talking with me about that because I've been pondering these things and I, I can see now that what actually kind of is working for you is not so much the need to take things out, but the need to um, prioritize and attend to the things that are um, all are important, but to relocate things and rebalance things so that you have energy to go into all of these pieces. Summarizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's been quite enlightening. Thank you, Sandra.